The container widget is one of the most basic widgets in Flutter with which you can decorate and position child widgets. I have already created here a container widget inside of our Flutter application and the first property to mention of the container is the color property. So we can set a container with different colors. So for example, I set it to orange or I can also set it here, for example, to red. And like you can see, the container is always trying to get the maximum width and also the maximum height it can get. So it tries always to expand to the maximum size by default. And next to the color property, we also have the child property where we put our child inside. And if we put a child inside, then you see it automatically changes. So it is not expanding anymore. It now fits exactly the size of the child widget. And if we set the alignment property, you see that the widget itself gets first of all centered. And the second effect is that it takes again the maximum width and height it can take. And this alignment property basically aligns our content widget, our child property, which we have set here inside, inside of our container. And we can also change it here, for example, to center right. And then you see that the child property, our text here, gets aligned to the center right. And we also can set here, for example, other values, top left. So basically you can choose here every corner you have in this container. Next to it, you can also set your specific width and height. So you can set your width and then you see that the container itself sizes to 200 pixels and you can also set here a height, let's say of 50, then it's also sizing to this height. To make this container right now, for example, centered, you can also wrap it into a center widget and then it is again centered. And this year you can also change it again to center then this is centered in the middle. With the width and height property, you can set the specific width and height like you can see. And if you choose, for example, a lower value, let's say we choose 50, then you see that here he tries also to size it down to 50. And if you take 10, then he also cuts here some child content inside. Alternatively to the width and height property, you can also use constraints. But to make this working, we want to remove the alignment property first of all, and then we can set our constraints. And here inside we set basically a min width and max width, and you can also do the same for min height and max height. And with these properties, you basically can set how much width and height our container should have. And here you see that the text widget, for example, goes to the next line because he has more size and width than our container. And this is also what you can see if you set, for example, the max height property, then you see that he cuts this widget by default because he cannot set the world text anymore inside. So for example, you can also set it here to 200, then he will fit it again inside. And now if you try here, for example, a value which is smaller, let's say hello, then you will see that it automatically gets here min width of 50. And if we go again smaller, then you see he still keeps a min width of 50, no matter if our content inside is even smaller. All right, this is also what you can do to set the constraints, but I want to go here back to the width and height properties and I will also center again the text here inside. The next property we will look at is the transform property and with this one you can rotate, scale and do much more effects on this container itself. And by default you have the transform of identity and then you can add here some rotation, for example, so you can rotate around the X, Y and Z axis. And we rotate here, for example, right now by P, which means that it is rotating by 180 degrees. And you can change this value also. So you go here with pi divided by two, then it's only rotating by 90 degrees. And with this transform property, you can set the rotation like you can see. So you can try here out the different methods which you can use. You can also set here the scale method next to it. And the last thing what is maybe cool is also to use the translate method to also position your widget differently in your UI. So I will simply right now go back and put it to identity. So this is a standard which we see here on the right side. 
And for our container, we also can set the padding, border and margin. So right now here inside we have a content and this reflects our white space here, this content. And around it we can set a padding and then comes the border and then the outer space, the margin. And we can now look at this. So what we want to do here first of all is to remove the alignment width and height. So let's remove it and now we can set here this padding property. And what you can see now if I hot reload that we have here 8 pixels around in space. And I can also set it here for example to a higher value to 16. Then you see we have much more space. And with this one you basically can change here the padding. And if we go back to the graphic we also have here our margin. And this is also what we can set. And this will be a space around it. So I will also set it here to 32 right now. And let's also put the center here away. Then you see exactly what this margin is doing. So what this margin is doing, it is adding some space to the left, to the top, to the right and to the bottom side of our widget. Because I have set it here to all directions and therefore it is putting here the space to all directions. You can also set it to other values. So let's take the half. Then you see that we have here less space to all directions and you also can set it to 8 and then you get much much less space like you can see. And you also can set it here to all directions so you have here left, top, right and bottom and you basically put here all the values inside you want to have. So let's say by default it looks like this and then you can for example choose okay the first attribute is left so we put here to the left side 8 pixels then you see we have here 8 pixels to the left side and you also can put here to the top which is the second one 32 then it is adding some space to the top and this is here for the right and for the bottom which you don't see right now because we don't have widgets below it or right to it. We also have here a property which is called decoration and with this one we basically can set the border of this widget and also the shadow and much more. And therefore we first of all need to put the color property here inside because otherwise we get an exception because if we have a color property it needs also to go inside of this decoration box and if you hot reload it will not change anything. But now we can get started and put here our decoration inside. And let's first of all set the border for our widget. So here inside I put the border and you see that we have set here a black color for our border into all directions. You can also change it for specific sites. And here you give it a width. I have set it to 3. You can also set it for example to 6 and this border gets bigger. And you can also set the border style. Then we also can set a border radius and the border radius is basically putting here some rounded shape around it and there you can set some values inside and the higher the value the more rounded our widget will get. And we also can set here this to a different shape and therefore I remove this border radius again and instead I put here this shape inside so we can put here a shape and like you can see it's not fitting all of our content and what we can do here is basically increasing our padding or we set a specific width and height and then it will take this one. So for example I set it here to 64 and then you see it fits again. And now we can also set the shadow so we have here in our decoration also the box shadow and basically you set here a box shadow class inside and inside of this class you can set a color. and after the color you need also to set a blur radius. Then you see that we have here a blur radius of 4. So it is changing here the shadow and our shadow is red. And you can also increase here this radius and it gets more blurred to the outside. And then you also can set here the spread radius. And the spread radius will increase the size of our shadow to the outside. And we also can set here for example a higher value, let's put it to 32, then you see it's spreading here much much more. And the last property you can set is also an offset and with this offset you can change the shadow in the x and y coordinate. So if I hot reload it you see that it is moving a little bit 
and you can also change it to a high value. Let's change it to 20. Then you see our shadow is moving to the bottom because we put here 20 inside and you can also change it on the X coordinate. So we can also put it here, for example, to 30. And then you see that our shadow is going into this direction. And combined, if you put this here to a lower spread radius, it might look great. So you can also experiment with it and create your own shadow in the background. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!